What is up, everybody? My name is Kyle Matovic. I am the host of the In Liberty and Health podcast, where we talk all things liberty, health and wellness, and beyond. My hope is to encourage and spread the message of liberty and physical and mental well-being. I hope you enjoy all the topics we talk about with our guests. We're on all major streaming platforms, so please sit back, relax, and enjoy. Man, I'm doing as good as anyone can do getting buried by his 13-year-old son on leg day. <laughs> I'm not going to apologize for not being on this podcast because I got to go see Metallica. So if that's a problem, kiss my ass. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> all right. All right, everybody, this is In Liberty and Health, episode number 124. I swear to God, the numbers just keep going by faster and faster and faster. <laughs> Today, this is going to be a pretty cool conversation. I think it's been quite a while since I've had a, a candidate on, but um, today I have Caroline Avery with me, who is currently running for Congress out in the uh, other side of Pennsylvania. So, uh, Caroline, um, first of all, how are you doing? Hi, Kyle. I'm doing good. I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. Of course, no. I'm like I said. I'm really, really excited to talk about this. So, um, you know, as per usual with most podcasts, um, I'll give you a little bit of uh, time to introduce yourself, take as long or as little as you feel you need, because uh, like I said, I'm looking forward to uh having this conversation, also sharing this with other people. So, uh, yeah, uh, feel free to start wherever and whenever you like. Okay. Well, um, we can sum it up pretty easily. My name is Caroline Avery, and I live in West Bristol, Pennsylvania. Um, the daughter of a master gunnery sergeant who served in uh, World War II, Korea, and Vietnam. So he did serve in Okinawa. Um, and I didn't know about all the horror of it. And he made sure. Um, I don't preach religion to anybody because you'll know them by their fruit. That's it. Okay. Nobody wants to hear me preach to them about religion. So I don't do that. Um, my favorite book, though, is the Holy Bible. Um, my favorite, my heroines are Lara Logan, for the obvious reasons. Um, she follows me on Twitter, and I'm quite proud of that, because she tells it like it is, and she's unafraid, and she isn't owned, and neither am I. Um, my other heroine is uh, Crystal Lee Sutton. Do you know who that is? Uh, name kind of rings a bell, but uh, I couldn't tell you right off the top of my head. That is Norma Ray. Do you know who Norma Ray was? Sorry. <laughs> Man, I'm already bogging down. Okay, she was a champion for um, the working people back in, in North Carolina back in the 60s and 70s. And she really, I mean, they put her in jail and all kinds of stuff because they were slave laboring people and killing them, working in like clothing factories and stuff like that. She's the one that held up the sign that said unions and Sally Field played her mm -hmm. and won an Emmy for it actually. But anyway, so, so she's also my heroine because she went ahead and did what was right anyway. And she died um, without any money, but she didn't buy, die poor because she had uh, what I've got, true grit and a backbone. She did the right thing for a lot of people. A lot of people benefited for what she did. And so, you know, that's somebody that I admire. Um, you know, those are like two of my, up, you know, her heroines, you know, that I look up to. Um, and uh, I'm married. I'm married. I've been with my husband for 22 years. He's a cowboy. He's got thick skin. He's like Clint Eastwood type of cowboy. He don't care much for people too much, but he'll say what he needs to stay. And he's a hundred behind me a hundred percent. He's like, go get him, honey, go get him. So, um, yeah, I'm his girl. And, uh, so anyway, you know, um, I moved out here about 35 years ago, I met my husband. You know, I moved out from California. I love Pennsylvania. I loved, um, you know, I was in the Republican party, joined them, uh, sadly <laughs> in 2015 because I wanted to vote in the primary. I did not like the way that the country was going. I certainly did not want to see more Hillary Clinton or any of those other people getting in. And so I registered for the first time as a Republican, so did my husband, <clears throat> and uh, did that. And then, you know, fast forward, you know, all the stuff's happening, you know, you know, SHF, you know, all over the place, COVID, everything like this. 
I put together like a team of people that was going across the state really and just helping people prep, helping people prep to not be afraid to learn how to you know protect themselves, to stand up for themselves legally, ethically, and morally. Um, you know, make sure that they had plenty of food. Uh, I helped people with the vaccine crapola, getting you know out of that. You know, I stood up for people like that, and I had a huge network going on. And I'm a world known person. I'm I'm a, I'm a world tra explorer, not a vacationer. Uh, explorer, okay. So I've been into the jungles of Malaysia. I've been into I've been into uh, the Middle East. I've been to Central America. I've met, you know, I've met federalities that had more integrity than these politicians. But in any case, so they started badgering me to run for office. They were all like had this Brian Fitzpatrick um, derangement, okay, and disorder, which, you know, for good reason. And uh, finally, you know, after about a year, they, they kind of wore me down. I just kept telling them, well, you know, you set me up and I'll swing for the fences. So that's what happened. Got to the, you know, got into the race. Um, you know, I'm pretty streetwise girl, so right away there's a bunch of baloney. Can I say bullshit? Of course. Okay, so it's a bunch of bullshit. Okay, bunch of bullshit, and I don't know who these people think they they are, but I. And more funny, I don't know who they think I am. Like they've got me confused with a whole another person. So, you know, immediately, you know, it wasn't going too well for um, the Republican Party. It wasn't going too well for a lot of these, um, you know, Trump people. And, you know, I like Donald Trump. I did. You know what I mean? I liked his policies. I, I'm not that type of person. I don't have to freak out over somebody's personality. I don't really care. I just turn the channel. Um, but, you know, they're, they're just not doing things very good or very right and you know i fought back and that's what i did and um got out of the party you know swung for the fences took a lot of heat a lot of threats i still have them all these people are so dumb you know and i took on some really big uh it was suggested to me that i might want to look into the libertarian party i probably was always a libertarian really i was an independent voter so i says well i says okay let me go check these people out so i went up checked them out and guess what found myself a home. These are nice people. You know, they're all a little bit different. Some are a little bit more different than others. Um, but you know what? I'm really fun. It's, it's gone past. It's gone past me liking them. I'm very fond of them. These are good people. They're young. They're like yourself. You know, I'm 60. I just want to help out. Give you guys the, what I got. And marry it with what you got, and maybe we can make some something good happen for the kids, kids, kids. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and there well, you go. Right. No, I really, really like a lot of that. Um, I kind of want to go back to something that you were talking about a little bit earlier. Um, when it comes to the uh, kind of grit aspect, I really think that's kind of what Pennsylvania, at least to me, kind of stands for. Because I've been to Florida, I've been to Kentucky, I lived in Ohio. Um, this kind of northeastern vibe. To me, I always picture the rugged kind of hands, right? I mean, I've, I've been a mechanic for 10 years. My dad's been a mechanic for 40 years. His dad was a mechanic, and then his dad was a mechanic. So, um, and, and, you know, we survived these cold winters, busting knuckles and going out and plowing snow, shoveling snow early in the morning to, you know, take care of our families and to put food on the table and stuff like that. And it seems like you kind of feel that spirit as well even though you may not have been formally from pennsylvania you seem like you've kind of found yourself a home here so moving from california um you said uh, i think um 32 years ago correct about 30 about 30 to 35 years ago i, I mm -hmm. came out here uh, i came out here i helped a friend move out here drove across country um helped help them move out here and i ended up staying for the summer because I just fell in love with the family. Mm -hmm. I was like, these are really great. And just checked it out because I was over here on the East Coast. So I went to like Niagara Falls, went to the city, all kind of stuff like what you do. And then I just was like, you know, I really like it here. Maybe I'll stay. So it's officially probably about, I, I, I guess I would make it official about 1991. Mm -hmm. So, you know, but I was here, I think, 89. I think I came in 89, but I was going back and forth a lot. You know, but I decided, you know, this is a great place and I love to travel. It's very central. 
um, uh, to like, you know, you can go to Europe, you can go to Florida, you can go to New York City, you can go to Philly, you can go to all kinds of places real quick, you know. So. What's going on, guys? Um, we're going to take a quick break from the show to tell you about these show sponsors and the way that you can support me and this podcast. Um, I'm sponsored by Axe and Sledge. I won't really focus in here, but uh, right here in my hand, I have their um, the grind, which is essential amino acids and hydration. Um, feel free to check it out. Um, this is your mom's sweet peach. They have some awesome flavors and awesome names. They also have multivitamins, fat burners, creatine, beta, beta alanine, um, all sorts of different supplements to help you get all jacked and tan and help you become a person more full of uh, liberty and health as this show is about. So um, if you want to support me and support this podcast, then feel free to go to axandsledge.com and check out um, all their great supplements there and use code Matovic10, that's M-A-T-O-V-C-I-K-1-0 at checkout for a little discount and to let them know I sent you their way. All right, everybody. Thanks. Now back on to the show. And I, hey, I was born in Kittery, Maine, so I'm a New Englander by birth, so... That's easy. That's you were just you just kind of pinballing all over the place. Um, so when it comes to kind of like your run for Congress and you moving out here, um, do you feel like you've kind of acclimated to the kind of there's this clothing company that I really like and I wear a lot of their clothes and I also um, am sponsored by their uh, supplement company called Axe and Sledge. Um, the Ameri or the company's called All American Roughneck, and the idea I think kind of is this like bold northeastern hard work and kind of mentality like i said i, I kind of get that from your story that you feel that and it seems like you and your husband kind of resemble that and i think that's someone who is more fit to leave pennsylvania than these wild you know woke democrats like john fetterman i i got a uh, ad from him today right for lieutenant governor talking about common sense gun control um abortion and something else but it, it's so funny to hear the trope of common sense gun control because what's common sense to me may not be common sense to you and definitely isn't common sense to him so it, it's like i said to me it just seems like this more hard-working kind of person fits the bill of a pennsylvanian politician more than some you know corporatist left-wing democrat Let's face it, that guy's a politician. I don't care what he says, and I don't care what hoodie he wears. Okay, this guy's getting $250,000 a year. Right now, he's lieutenant governor. Don't give me this Bologna about, oh, you know, I'm the real deal. Give me a break. You know what I mean? Give me a break. It's, it's, it's it, you know, if it wasn't nearly criminal, it would be laughable. But it's, it's actually quite terrifying, to tell you the truth quite terrifying. We have a candidate and I hope that he, I hope that he, um, I know that Eric is way smarter. Okay. He has a way better heart because we have a libertarian candidate, um, for, for that, uh, for that seat. And, um, you know, of course it's a very long shot, um, because of the big, big money, but it's still a shot. And I tell you what, I'd much rather see Eric. That's for sure. But, um, yeah, Fetterman and, you know, the common man, that's just, you know, and there's nothing wrong. Now, listen, I want to really make this clear. I don't feel that there's anything wrong, like growing up privileged, you know, that I think that's cool. Like if you got to have that in your life and if you got to have good parents and they gave you good things and you got to have a good education and all that, listen, you're just as good a person as anybody else. But don't, you know, don't, don't, don't be fake. You know, don't be fake. Don't, don't say you're one thing and then you're really not that thing. Just embrace it. Like, you know, I embrace all my imperfections. I always make people laugh. I used to be a go-go dancer. I was a go-go dancer 35 years ago. I mean, for Pete's sake. You know, we laugh about it. I mean, it's kind of funny because it's comical. You know, I, I come from California. I ran around in my bikini, surfing in my bikini. That would, You know, I come out here. I couldn't get in. I had, guess what? If I wasn't going to pay my electric bill, they were going to shut it off. I mean, I knew that. So, you know. Um, but like, I embrace it. Am I proud of it? Not necessarily, but you know, um, it wasn't illegal and ethical or immoral, you know, um, I found other means to, to make a living, you know, as soon as I could, but, um, you know, it's, 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 it's part of my life. Like, I'm not going to say I'm this, uh, holy roller, um, 
you know, right wing, I love Jesus and he loves me and all this other stuff when I'm just Caroline Avery that knows a lot of stuff and knows how it feels to have, um, to have to sweat, knows how it feels to be afraid that you might not make your bills, um, real life experiences and, you know, some, and I had some privilege too. I, I'm, I could imagine, I mean, there's a lot of people who had it a lot worse than me in life. I've just been willing to work at it. That's all. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah. Well, that, that's very important as well. And, uh, you know, I kind of feel that even with my history as well. And I think everybody kind of has varying degrees of struggle. Um, I've talked about it a little bit on the podcast. My mom had cancer three times and I moved, I think, since I moved into this house five years ago, I want to say I moved probably 16 times in my life. And once again, you could find somebody out there who's had it worse than me, but you know, my life wasn't exactly easy either, but I, I'm kind of grateful for those struggles because they made me into the person who I am today. And it's very cliche to say that, but I mean, it is sincerely true that had I not gone through those struggles, I may not be here right now. Um, I may not be getting married in November. Um, I may not have the house that I have. I may not be with my three dogs. Two of them are laying down right beside me. You can see my mini pin right there. And my Doberman Australian Shepherd is right here to my uh, left. Um, I wouldn't have all the um, great things that I get to enjoy today. So um you know, like you said, you should be proud of the uh, struggles that you went through. And when you see some of these, um, some politicians, it's almost like they just have this, they want to have this glow, like their shit doesn't stink, essentially. And I hate saying that, but that's essentially what it is. Like, you can't relate to them. So this is kind of where I think the appeal of Donald Trump came from. And obviously, I'm a libertarian, and I have many, many disagreements with Donald Trump. But, uh, you know, he was pretty brazen about his flaws. Now, would he admit that he had them? No, but once again, you could tell that he was bombastically him. And there's something to that when you can see somebody for who they are and no more and no less, right? What you see is what you get. That, that's something that I think a lot of people kind of look for in any kind of figure, really. And you can sense when people aren't that way and that really turns them off. And for God's sakes, be consistent, right? Mm -hmm. for, for, just be who you are and be consistent, you know? I remember, like, one of the first things I was told, um, I think I was speaking. Oh, that was the hardest thing. And to overcome was to public speak because I've publicly spoke before, but it's generally on things I would be, call myself somewhat of an authority on. And that it wasn't politics. And I found that, you know, because obviously I wasn't liked. Most of the places that I went were Republican clubs and things like that. And when I walked in there, they were pretty much already, she has the audacity because a lot of these people already tried to buy me and stuff like that. And I already said, hell no, to hell no. Um, so, you know, it was, it was very difficult for me to uh, speak. And, and I said to somebody trying to coach me, I said, oh, I said, well, I made a mistake. And they said, oh, that's like a number one rule. Like never say that in politics, like never admit that you made a mistake i said well you know what then I, I don't know what to tell you because every single real true success in my life goes right back to okay how come that didn't work and it's i can't change other people but i can change me so what did i do that made it so it didn't work because then i can for to jen Saki it i can circle back and say, okay, I did that before. And if that's the one thing that didn't work, and I'll bet you as a mechanic, you can relate to that because you know how you got to troubleshoot, mm. right? Yeah. So you know, that was kind of like, um, we, I was, we're talking about our life experiences and stuff. And I, I'm old enough to know that, you know, one of my, you know, best things that I have going for me is my willingness to admit met all of my falling down and getting back up, falling down, getting back up, falling down, getting back up. The whole, the whole, you know, um, cliche of, you know, it's not how hard you got hit. It's not hard, how hard you got hit. It's how many times you got back up or something like that. Yeah. So, and I, I live like that. Like I don't live in, in the, um, I don't live in the, oh, I don't live in the, um, I don't live in the mess. I don't live in. I don't live in the mess, and I don't live in the problem. I'm continually looking for the solution, mm -hmm. and sometimes the same problem has, you know, different levels of solution mm -hmm. in it. You know, and this is one of the reasons why, at this point, 
watching things go, you know, I think I can do a way better job than, um, you know, a good amount of the politicians. That's for sure, just for the pure fact that I'm willing to say, hey, guess what? What's going on here? Let me take some inventory. Let's see what's going on. And then I don't really want to do this for a job. Like, I just like to, you know, if I get elected, I'll run to be reelected after that, clean the house, clean the house, make sure it's nice. It's a good clean house. So that somebody else can step in at their turn, you know, their turn to do it. And that's, you know, we'd be much more effective in everything if, if other people would just get into that, but they don't. So I can't do anything about that, but I can sure make them run for the money like this, can't I? <laughs> yeah, for real. And, um, you know, so I, I guess that kind of tells into the question of, why you would want to run for Congress. And it's a very, very low bar to be better than some of the ones that we got in there now. And we have uh, Marjorie Taylor Greene, Thomas Massey, and a few others who are actually good. But, um, you know, I think when we have a libertarian in Congress, um, someone who's going to stick to their principles and won't be bought out, I think that's huge because it's so easy to succumb to just, hey, I'm going to fill your pocket with this money and I need you to pass this bill. In fact, I was listening to a uh, Peter Schiff show podcast earlier and he was mentioning about the Jones Act and how literally just repealing this one act would be able to help transport goods throughout the country because you have to have an American-made ship to move Amer or to move goods around the country. It just has to be this way or using strictly American um planes and stuff like that which okay i'm all for using american-made stuff but if it's not the most reliable way at this time then we should have you know use any means that we have to transport goods so let's let's get rid of that um so why congress and what kind of motivated you to run and then we can kind of get into the details of crossing over uh parties um after that well honestly um i'll, I'll tell oh, you okay oh. first of crafted to do this okay because people know me and they're like you're tenacious like you're a go-getter like you're not going to sell it out like you're going to call a spade a spade you don't care if they call you names and you don't care about your past please 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 help us help us help us and so you know when they started to you know I, I wasn't happy with Brian Fitzpatrick at all you know I wasn't happy at all I was like not happy and I was calling and calling his office and you know I got to know some of his um you know, receptionist, Ashka, and then there's Peter and everything. And they're just running me around. But this is during the pandemic. And like, they think they're running me around, but I was running them around. I got them on speakerphone. I'm cleaning out my kitchen cabinets. You know what I mean? I'm holding up their time. I'm holding up their time. I'm like, okay, you MRFers, you want to freaking play? You want to play with the American public and, you, and play these little circle jerk games and think you can get away with it? Like I'm some sort of an idiot? Like, no, how about this, you know? So I just, you know, did that for a while. And, you know, I never, he never called me back, never, ever called me back. And they kept, you know, banging on the door, asking me, please run. I said, you know what? To my husband, I said, I'm going to invite them all over to my house and I'm going to tell them my life story. And then they'll stop bugging me. So they came over to my house. You know, we're talking about people in suits and stuff, right? And they come over to, and executives, they come over to my house. I tell them my life story and they sit there with their mouths wide open. They were like, and I thought, oh, great. You know, and they says, oh my God, now I know you're the one for us, right? Run, please run. So, um, so that's why, I mean, they kind of, I was basically talked into it. And, you know, the way I think of it is like, please don't anybody that's be discouraged that's hearing this, that's running for something of a lower office, but really that... You got to get into the, the state thing. They just run you around in circles. I was in the I was in the racehorse business, and I know all about state politics and all that stuff. And they just run you around in circles, and then they send you down to D.C. and D.C. says, "Oh, that's not within your purview and all that." So I got to go straight to the problem, you know. And the problem is federal. Okay, we're in a big hot mess. Okay, we really have um, the Tenth Amendment has been, uh, you know, um, basically abolished, you know for lack of a better word, maybe not totally, you know what I mean? But um, so, so yeah, that, and you know, I was pissed. I was like, you know, this freaking cat won't even call me back, Brian Fitzpatrick. I'm like, you know what? I'll run against him. You know, maybe if he, you know, maybe he'll do something then, you know, maybe he'll call me back, you know? And right away, right away, you know, his henchmen were after me and at the park where my husband was. And they're like, oh, isn't your wife running for Congress? And all this crap, they sent all these losers to me. These, these people insult my intelligence. They sent these losers to intimidate me. You know, and as, as time went on, it, it, you know, 
it all it did was increase my resolve. So, um, uh, and the federal, the reason why federal is exactly why I said so, because that's where the problem is. So, you know, if I'm going to do this, so if I'm going to get skinned alive and beat up, if I'm going to go in the punch in the ring. I'm going to go for the, um, what I say to people who sell my petition, I'm going to go for the big enchilada. You know, I'm just going to go for it. Okay. Anything higher than that, really, for, for me, is probably not even something I'd really be interested in. But Congress, I could get it done. I could get stuff done in there. I could actually get things done. So that's that's why Fed, that's why U.S. House, and um, that's why that's why. And then once I started getting the, you know, the pushback and the intimidation and the you know, we'll help you cheat in a debate. I said, I don't know who you think. That I'm not Hillary Clinton, and you're not Donna Brazil. I said, so you better get off my porch right now. You know, I mean, I got really angry. I got really angry. And so the more that that kind of stuff transpired, the more I, the, the resolve, the more pissed off I was. He's ripped us off for our country. You know what I mean? Our republic has fallen. And we got these, you know, jokers, jokers to the left of me, clowns to the right. You know what I mean? Screwing around with all this stuff with their money, patting each other on the back and stuff. It's a bunch of shit, Kyle. Mm. Okay? Mm. And these people, what they do is they run around with the same 500 people or the same 1,000 people. And it's all of them with their, you know, cloth tablecloths and all that stuff. And that's great. I'm glad they're having their good life, patting each other on the back. But this is exactly how they legislate, too. That's the real problem. They talk to those 1,000 people and they follow them around and how great they are and everything. But they legislate for just 1,000 people, too. They're not legislating for you. They're not legislating for me. Okay, you're lucky you still got your podcast. I mean, it won't be long if you get if you get popular enough, you're going to have to go somewhere else. You won't be able to be Zoom or something. So, you know, and that kind of stuff, you know, I'm pissed off about it. I'm pissed off. I'm pissed off. My dad's dead. You know what I mean? He died from uh, encephalitis that he caught in um, Korea. You know, he he died before he actually fell down. You know what I mean? Um, do you understand that term? No, no. He died really. before he actually fell down. Well, what it means is like he got he got encephalitis in Korea. He got bit by a flea in Korea that gave him encephalitis, but it didn't kill him for like eight years afterwards. Mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So, you know, what killed him was encephalitis. Where did he get it in Korea? So it basically, you know, the minute that he got bit by that flea and he got that disease, you know, he was a goner. And, you know, I think that that is, you know, when I see these politicians behaving this way, I think about my father, you know, and I lost my father really young and I had a really hard childhood. Um, but I overcame it and still stayed to be joyous and happy the best of my ability. Um, it just pisses me off. You know what I mean? Like he fought, you know, I'm not, I'm not for war. You know, you're well, I'm on the right side with the libertarians. Like we need to be out of all that crap. My brothers went to Vietnam. I've seen the whole thing. Yeah. We don't need any of that. But, you know, but the whole thing is also, you know, our veterans and people that did fight, you know, we got, you know, that did fight, you know, um, I'm not into like, you know, uh, disrespecting that. That's for sure. You know, that's for sure. So, um, you know, yeah, that's so, pretty much um, why. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I completely agree with you. If we're going to have this global empire where we go send young men and women indoctrinated over to go fight these wars for regime change, and now what's seeming to be shaping up to be a quote unquote great power competition with China and Russia, um, it, it's not necessary. And if they're going to be bringing, if they're going to be sending them out that way and then bring them back, then the least thing we could do is at least care for them, right? Uh, and obviously, as libertarians, we favor abolishing all of this. But once again, these people were taken advantage of from the time they were kids and told that they're heroes if they go do this. And they go over there and they find out that our government is handing these countries money hand over fist and that they're killing you know, innocent women and children over in these other countries. And they come back and they're completely broken mentally, physically. And the VA just doesn't give a shit about them at all. They, get, they have no recourse. They have no treatment. And then they're just kind of left out to die. Now, it's really sad. Let me stop and correct you. Sorry. The VA does give a shit. About, you know who doesn't give a shit about them is our government. That's who the people are working. You, you see what I'm saying? In a good, not, I would say 95% of the people in the VA are doing it for the right reason. Our government. 
they're shit. Right. They're shit. They are. They're shit right. for what they're doing. Yeah, and, and yeah. It, like for I what said, they're they, doing and they send the troops over, and then they come back to just a completely broken system with once again a government that just give zero shits about them. I mean, and there's no, once again, there's no recourse for them to get taken care of. And the entire VA system that's set up for them doesn't help them out at all. And and not that I necessarily blame the VA for that. I just blame the fact that the government facilitates that. And that's what, you know, ultimately leads to, you know, a high suicide rate and then them having trouble assimilating back into society. Because once again, they were told from the time they were young that this is what, you know, heroes and good people do. And once again, they find out that, it was mostly bullshit that was sold to them as, you know, under the guise of being a hero, that it was actually just a jobs program for our government to launder money. Well, well, they get them all ramped up. They get them all ramped up and, and, you know, with other, you know, offenses that, you know, I, you know, I, I, I have, I'm going to save some of my stuff because I don't like to give my competitors too much. And I just certainly don't want to give like other campaigns, uh, their job, they're going to have to earn their smarts. Like I had to earn mine and figure it out. Yeah. You know what I mean? But um, like, you know, what really, I talked to my husband about this a lot. I mean, I just, blo- I just go nuts over this because I, are you familiar with Lara Logan? Do you know who she is? Oh, I know who she is, but I'm not too, too familiar with her. Should, should be. She's an excellent, she's an actual excellent, excellent journalist. Okay. She's from South Africa. Okay. She lives here, here in the United States now that she lives in Texas, but she's an excellent journalist. And Nobody owns her. And, um, but in any case, um, you know, uh, I'm, she's a huge human rights activist and so am I. And I don't mean activist, I mean advocate, which is different, okay? I don't want to just complain. I want to solve, pro- I want to help solve problems, okay? We need both. We need activists and we need advocates. And, um, you know, I told my husband, I said, you know, I, I just go nuts. I said, how many people do we have to you know, buy, build these tiny homes for? You know, we got tunnels to towers and God bless them. But when is that supposed to end? Like, weren't we supposed to end Tunnel of the Towers like like 15 years ago? You know, and we're still, and they're just, you know, and they're just keep doing it. And they keep doing it. And they're like, you know, oh, we gave you this nice little home. And that is wonderful. And I'm so glad they did that. But I don't want our men to be rolling into the shower. I want them to walk into the shower. Okay. So I, I, I you know, I, I commend, I commend the tunnel to towers and the organizations that are doing this for the people who, you know, literally, you know, lost their limbs. Okay. But my philosophy is how about if we just keep them that they have their limbs. Okay. I would rather that because we can do peace through strength. That's already been proven. We can do it, but war equals money. So, you know, military industrial complex and blah, 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 all that stuff that I'm quite sure you're, very familiar with so right, war yeah. equals money that's why they want to get that. yeah it's it's a uh, very unfortunate the situation that we find ourselves in um so when it comes to kind of like your locale um i know that your race is really really interesting because you're running against somebody who's very very unpopular so uh i guess why um once again, why Congress against this specific person? Because um, Anthony, when him and I were talking, he kind of gave me some of these preliminary details. But uh, I want to hear you lay this out and why this isn't just like a LARP. Why I think this is actually a winnable race because the person that you're running against is so unpopular. Well, he, he, he's a bad cat. There's no doubt about that. He's a bad cat. Okay. Um, and there's more than one way to skin a cat. That's for sure. Okay. This guy's a bad dude. All right, he's F, he's FBI, ex-FBI, he says, I'm ex-FBI, but sometimes he says, I'm FBI. You're never ex-FBI, okay? You're never ex-FBI. It's just, it doesn't happen. You're never ex-DNI or any of that stuff. The guy's a trained effing spy, okay? We don't need a trained effing spy, you know, in Congress. Now, I actually voted for him, okay, when he first come around, okay? His people came to our house. They sat in my house, in my home. For probably an hour, it took them at least an hour to talk me and my husband into pulling the lever for Brian Fitzpatrick. He promised to, uh, he promised to go with the Donald Trump agenda because that's what I wanted. I wanted the American first. I wanted peace through strength. I wanted to have a, a good, roaring economy. Um, you know, I liked a lot of his. Uh, you know, I liked in general, and I liked that he was swinging for the fences. I liked that he was telling people to go. You know. F off and stuff. You know what I mean? He's like, I know what's going on. You know, I'm going to say so. And so 
one thing is now I found out that he, that Brian Fitzpatrick never even voted for Donald Trump. So um, he voted, he wrote in Mike Pence in 2016. So his people came here, swore to God, all that other stuff. So I'm not a fan of that, but you know, that's not the reason to do it too much either. But if you just continue to go down the line and just the in your face, like if I wouldn't be running for Congress if it wasn't for Brian Fitzpatrick. All right, guys, um, I'm absolutely thrilled with the uh, show's new sponsor. Um, I am now sponsored and uh, have an affiliate through LMNT Electrolytes. Um, I have used these electrolytes for years. Um, back when I used to do a lot of fasting, in fact, I used to drink, sometimes I want to say up to seven a day, seven little packets. So um, the packets are full of all the electrolytes that you need to perform and hydrate yourself properly. Um you need sodium for pretty much every single function in your body, despite what um, a lot of people may tell you. Um, sodium doesn't actually cause a lot of the issues that uh, people kind of would have you believe. So um, just real quick to give you a little bit of facts. Um, you don't need sugar to hydrate. Electrolytes and water don't require glucose to pass through the gut. The average American consumes over 60 pounds of sugar a year. And um, when it comes to athletic performance, um, you can actually lose up to seven grams per day in hot climate. So um, make sure you click on the affiliate link below to get all your hydration needs. And like I said, I'm super stoked to have these guys um, teamed up with the podcast and uh, just make sure you get your uh, electrolytes through Element. All right, guys, thanks. You see what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, you're gonna love this, but I'm not an ass looking for a seat, okay? This guy's a bad cat. These people are always knocking people out of the race. They're always bribing their opponents. They're always playing these games. This is BS. This is our country. And you know what? God bless you. But I, here I come because I'm going to give you, I'm going to ask questions. I want to know what's going on. Okay. Where was he in 2015? Okay. He was the special investigator. He worked for James Comey as the special investigator to Ukraine. He was the special prosecutor sent to Ukraine. During the Burisma de debacle under the Biden administration to find the corruption in Ukraine, the most corrupt country in the world. This Ukraine is like a giant washing machine. That's where all countries go to wash their money. It's like a giant laundry mat. You know, it just is what it is. I mean, you know, people can say what they want. I don't hate Ukrainians or any of that. It just is what it is. Okay. So this guy goes there, Brian Fitzpatrick as an FBI agent and a special prosecutor during the Burisma, and he can't find any, he didn't prosecute anybody, couldn't find any corruption. Okay, so that's kind of smells right. So then, you know, he um, signed in the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill. He co-signed all this crap all with this, uh, you know, vaccine database and closing down our state. Ooh. He's running around with that Rachel Levine. And Rachel Levine is a man, all right? They're canceling men and women at the same time with the same exact trick, okay? With pulling the same rabbit out of the same hat, okay? Co-signing that sort of stuff, that's identity theft, okay? So now he's starting to piss me off, okay? And locking people down, taking, you know, co-signing it. So now he's starting to piss me off, you know? And he's got the Equality Act, he signed that. Okay, that lets men compete in women's sports. There again, you're, you're not people like you're canceling women. You're also canceling men. You're also canceling men. I happen to be a big fan of men. We need men and I think we need women. I'm sick and tired of this country bashing men to the point where they can't even stand up and, and, and say the truth about anything because they're going to be called racist or sexist or this or that. Listen, men are need to be men. My, I got a good husband. I'm lucky. He's like you. He's a mechanic. He's a horseman. You know, he can fix whatever. You know, he's, you know, it is what it is, you know. But I'm tired of that. I'm, I'm tired of it. And and Brian's co-signing that, you know. Uh, so he did the $1.2 trillion infrastructure bill, the vaccine database, you know, all these gun grabs, these the bump stock um, bill, uh, red flag laws, the extra, um, the extra uh background checks for your Second Amendment list, and you're talking to a person who's the Second Amendment saved my life. Now, the Second Amendment saved my life, and the police saved the person who was attacking me's life, okay? So I did the right things. I was, I'm familiar with my firearm, my sidearm. It was a break-in. I called the police, 
and they came in time to not, that I didn't have to that I didn't have to kill him because that was the only option left. There was no other option. I was on 911. I said, there's no other option. There's the lady's like, hang on, Caroline. We're almost there because she knew, you know, she's trying to talk me down and I'm freaking out. Right. And I said, look, I got no other option because the guy's like right here. I mean, I got no other option. Like there is no leg shot, which is hilarious anyway. But, you know, thank, thank goodness, you know, so I don't like, so the police came and they beat him up pretty good. And, and so I did the right thing. And so I'm a huge Second Amendment advocate. I know what it means. It's not just for self-defense. And I, I know what it means. And um, so Brian's not a, Brian has a lot of friends that think they're really smart, but they're not. One of his friends told me, now this is hearsay, and it's just something that somebody else told me, but it's, you know, my First Amendment. And he told me that Brian said that he didn't believe anybody should be able to have guns except for police and the military. I said, oh my God, that's terrifying. He's a maniac. Mm -hmm. So that's why. Let's see, what else do we want to know about? Let's see, he voted for the vaccine database. He voted for the Equality Act. He voted for the uh, uh, with the, uh, the Paris Climate Accord, let's say, uh, what else did he do? Oh, and then most recently, the $40 billion to Ukraine. Okay, the $40 billion to Ukraine, while well, we're on fire in our country, yeah. our economy is on fire. Um, and let's see, the most recent one is the 1808, HR 1808, you know, banning the you know, assault rifle ban, you know, basically taking our Second Amendment away from us. So the government can go ahead and continue to beat us up. And um, so uh, I think that's just about a small portion of why Brian Fitzpatrick. <laughs> Does that sum it up pretty good? Yeah. Yeah. I actually had no idea that he actually had uh, voted for all that stuff. Now I knew he was bad, but I mean, that's like swamp creature to a T. I mean, that's voting with the regime consistently. And especially with the vaccine database, that one is um, in particularly troubling to me. Now I'm not against people deciding they want the vaccine, but my problem is, is giving people the impression that this is safe and effective for everybody, no matter what, when there's now data that has come out. Um, I have referenced a study consistently. I think it was uh, Noam Barda et al. that did a, a study that found actually your chances of dying from the, or if you're in the age range of 18 to 29 and you get vaccinated, you're actually more likely to have a myocarditis event um, than if you were to just have COVID regularly. And it's not like the chances are insanely high but um, the chances of you getting myocarditis from the vaccine versus getting it from COVID are drastically higher. So I'm against people not basically, I'm for informed consent, right? Um, so if you're going to be getting vaccinated, then you should know kind of what the ups and downs are. But the problem is, is that nobody's telling anybody the downs of it. And then on top of that, when you have this vaccine database that, you know, he had voted for, then now you have literally set up a caste system, a system of people who have rights and people who do not based on a medical decision that should be up to the, you know, the privacy of each individual as to whether or not they want to let this out to the public. Um, that is totalitarian to another degree. Right. I mean, we saw ourselves getting locked down in our homes in 2020, but the idea that once again, a private medical decision will change whether or not you have basic human rights is just insane to me. So, um, you know, I completely support you. We should get this person out at all costs. Yeah. Well, yes, I, it is. It is all costs for me. It really is. And, but the, the whole thing is, is, you know what, you know, some things are worth, I'm just going to say it. This is a hell worth dying on. You know, I mean, it's for the kids, kids, kids. Look, I'm 60 years old. I'm not going to, We don't. me and my husband don't have kids. We're not going to be paying for this, you know. I almost feel like, I feel almost feel that it's my obligation to do something with the kids, to help the kids so that, you know, they have, the, I had, you know, I had hard times in my life, but I have a good life. You know, I have a good full life and because I'm an American citizen, okay, because of this country, I've been afforded to do all kinds of things. I mean, I'm a world explorer. I've been to many, many countries. I've been all the way around the world. I stay connected with people too. So I've been to many communist countries and many countries where people don't have the luxuries that we have. And we really do take them for, you know, for granted. And, you know, but I don't expect everybody to have all those, uh, you know, those, those backgrounds, but, you know, I, I have them. I have them backgrounds. So those backgrounds. So, you know, it's, it's part of it. It's, it's, I almost feel obligated, you know, and especially, you know, to have this kind of information 
and then not do anything about it. I consider that almost derelict. And, you know, um, part of me, uh, I have to say, did you know that the art museum, you're not allowed to go to Philadelphia Art Museum if you're not vaccinated? Still. Wow. Yeah. So, but, um, yeah, so I kind of like, you know, and then let me circle back again. I like to, I kind of like to steal crazy nuts because it drives them crazy that I do it. So I like to do it on purpose. So let's like circle back like Jen Psaki and we'll circle back to, you know, um, the, the, the Republican Party as a whole, as an institution, um, not the people, but I'm talking about the politicians. And then the difference of coming to the Libertarian Party and, you know, um, they kind of were like, oh, well, you know, she'll have to win us over. They kind of had that attitude in a little bit. And I can understand why that would be. But I was like, you know, I don't need to beg your asses to get my to get skinned alive. You know what I mean? Because I was like, whichever, like, I, because I am a faithful person and I just put one foot in front of front of the other and it led me to the libertarian party i was told to go there and check it out and i have an open mind and i do you know keep an open mind go check it out and i tell you something i am really really impressed i mean some of this stuff i am not on board with and you know i just I don't have to be now this is america right um but these are good people i mean they've got a real shot we've got a real shot here with this this, this libertarian party, and I'm, I'm real fond of it. I think that, you know, I think it's a good marriage. I think that, you know, I think if we could get to, you know, get the choo-choo train rolling on this, and, and it's going, it's going, because you know what? Because it's time, it's time. And and it's, like I said, it's a hill worth dying on for me, because now I've come across people that are young, and and they're worth me fighting for. They're worth me fighting for. They're They're worth it. Okay, because they're going to have kids, and they do have kids, and some of them, some of them that I'm around, they already have kids, and you know, I've been invited to so many nice places, and you know, so many people have been nice to me, even lots of Republicans too, you know, because it's not, it's, it's, it's the, it's the establishment, it's not necessarily the voter, and you know, I've even won over lots of Democrats because they're like, oh well, you know, I'm blue, I'm red, and I'm, I'm trying to build a bridge there. I said, look, this, I'll tell you what I am. My pronoun is American woman. Okay. How about that? Okay. I'm for the Bill of Rights. How about that? How about let's start at this basic level here. Okay. And like one Democrat yesterday, she says to me, oh, you know, she got really upset about me saying something like I caucus with the Republicans because I'm more likely to be lined up with the conservative side than the other side, you know, and um, I'm just being transparent, you know, but nobody's going to push me around. No one. And, uh, I told her, she's like, well, this is a blue area. I said, no, this is a red, white, and blue area. That's what it is. It's red, white, and blue. So. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's really, really cool. And I like that you lay out the distinction between the GOP base and the GOP as a establishment because it's very, very important. Um, whenever I'm railing against Republicans, it's establishment Republicans. And, you know, any Republican that doesn't really, they're not a Ron Paul style Republican where they're, anti-war they're pro-freedom they're pro-liberty and um you know pro-free markets that's the kind of republicans that i want to see and it may piss some libertarians off but i mean if there's republicans that are um you know good on all the issues then i'm okay with them running and getting support but you know it, because at the end of the day my goal is liberty right it's not a bigger libertarian party it's not a bigger republican party it's about liberty and here in pennsylvania i really do believe that the libertarian party is the best way forward because a lot of the republicans running here are a joke let's be honest i mean a lot of them are calling for war with china a lot of them are calling for um just absolutely abysmal stuff that it's like why would you get on board with this and they voted for you know like you're saying gun control and some other stuff so um he, we have a very unique opportunity in the libertarian party and uh you know i'm definitely glad that you're here to uh kind of assist in our effort and hopefully kind of obtaining some form of liberty in our lifetime. Yeah, um, I did notice a lot, you know, but it, it's getting better because I'm, I'm, as you can see, I'm feisty, you know, so I, I get some libertarian pushback. Oh, well, she's a Republican and this and that, you know, and I'm like, you know, I'm just saying small ideas, stay small, keep small, people small, you know, I mean, you, you, like, how do you expect to get elected if you're going to have, like, a purist test? If you're going to be a purist, then you're going to be just like some of these other people that they're, you know, you got to be a, 
a Christian. You got to be this kind of Christian. You can't even be just a different kind of Christian. You have to be this Christian, this way, to do it this way. That's religion. Religion will screw up anything. Trust me. They'll screw up anything. That's why I don't bother with it. Okay. It's, it's, it's it, you know, I don't. That's your business and I don't want to be no part of it. I'll tell you who I am and that's it. You know, if you like it, like, you know, I went into the jungles in Malaysia and prayed where the monks prayed and I was invited to go there. And, it, you know, and, you know, it's not a tourist trap either. Trust me, you got to be invited to go there years ago. And they lived down in there and stuff like these are like Hindu people. I totally dig them and love them. And, and they dig and love me. And they knew they know I'm a Christian. They don't care. They never asked me, oh, that's no good. You know what I mean? So on this country, we get too much of that, you know. Right. But yeah, we have got to open up a bit on that kind of a purist test thing, because that's not the, you know, that's that's. It'll stay small. You'll stay small. You won't be able to get elected. You know? Nope. Yeah, you gotta, I totally you gotta, agree. Yeah, well, you so got to be able to, Like, if you say that you're for your freedoms and you say that you want everybody to really, you know, be happy and have their freedoms, then you have to mean it. It can't be like, well, if you check this list, okay, did you, you know, are you Jesus? Do you like Jesus? Okay, good. Then you're good. If you like, you know, root beer, okay, great. You're good. Do you like this? Okay, you're good. Yeah. You, can, you know what I mean? It's, you know, it's good. And they're not being like that to me. They're not. Right. It's got to be a lot of coalition building where basically we focus on specific issues. And really, I think once this message gets out to enough people presented by the right kind of person, then um, you can really expand, um, you know, the what people desire, right? Because if you look at someone like Trump and I'm not a Trump fan at all, but I can also recognize that him preaching the anti-war message as poor as it may have been from somebody who knows, you know, these bit about foreign policy. Um, what you, what the takeaway there should be is that when message by the right person, um, you can get a whole bunch of people to buy into it and then really change the way they look at the world. So what if we had a powerful libertarian figure who's able to preach this message to people and they really buy into it? That's kind of what I think needs to happen. And I think that once again, in Pennsylvania, and even at a federal level, um, given the right voice and the right person, um, I think that could really happen. We could really see the direction of this country shift. Yeah, and let me clarify, just so that it's there's no mixed message. What I'm saying about this purist test and stuff like that, the people that I'm meeting in the Libertarian Party, they're not doing that to me. They are they are giving me my head. They are letting me be me, you know? And, and like some of the stuff I don't agree, I'm like, you know what? I'm not there yet. Listen, who knows? I might be there someday, you know? Don't push on me. I'm not going to push on you to think my way. Don't make me think your way. Offer, offer it, you know, just like you would with a, any good food. You know, offer it, you know, offer it a few times and somebody, you know, they might, if they get hungry, they'll sniff around, they'll find it and they'll, they might take it and they might like it, you know, but you start shoving it down people's throat. That's no good. But that hasn't been my experience. These, I'm telling you, I'm so, I'm so hopeful, hopeful because these people that I'm meeting are really great. They're really fantastic. They're smart. They're fantastic. They're 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 putting up with me because I'm not that easy. That's for sure. Um, and I'm energized by it, and I'm hopeful. Yeah, that's awesome, Caroline. Um, I think that's a really really good note to end it on. Um, do you have any other final thoughts and anywhere people can keep up with you and uh, support you? Yes. Oh my gosh. Donate if you can. I know, and I I don't really ask for money, so that's obviously I'm not a politician, so but. You know, but I will ask for money. If you can donate, go to carolineforcongress.us. That's spelled out Caroline and then F O R for Congress.us. Um, and you'll see I have a little video that comes up. It's really good. The video is really good. I did it myself with the uh, help of uh, somebody editing it for me. Um, but I put out all the, you know, all the pictures and stuff like that myself. I'm creative. Um, Go there, look over my things, uh, you know, try to be open-minded, you know. I think on a whole, it suits any person that wants to be free. And uh, donate, follow my follow my links to my Facebook page, which I'm not very good at, but whatever. Uh, follow it anyway, because I'll, I'll get better. I will, I'll get better. I am getting better at it. Um, you can send me emails, ask me questions. Um, 
I'm, uh, I'm very transparent. Um, and so, uh, yeah, Caroline Avery for Congress, you know, you tell your friends about me. That's the biggest thing. It's not going to be the money, okay? It's not going to be the money. It's not going to be as hard as the name recognition. That's what I need. So um, I'm so grateful for you having me on your show, Kyle. I yeah, of course. And um, I really enjoyed the conversation as well. Um, I will have all your links in the description below. Um, you know, once again, if everybody listened, make sure you go check her out. Um, make sure you like, subscribe, and share. Um, this was In Liberty and Health. And, um, you know, until next time, everybody take care. We'll see you in the next one.